What is up, boys and girls? We're just out here cruising in the teal with it, trying to get into a couple salmon. I got my boy Nestor with me this morning. What up, guys? It's a beautiful overcast day out here on the Oregon coast. We're cruising, cruising down the estuary by the bay and the river, trying to get into a Chinook salmon, maybe a clipper, a coho. I think it's gonna be a real fun day. Stay tuned. You're watching the bite. Marking some bait on the bottom. Maybe a couple of fish. Drop the bucket. Yeah. Well, you guys, we're just out here slow cruising, hoping to find ourselves a couple of fish. We've been running a couple of different um, patterns so to speak behind the boat i ran a uh, herring that had a little head cap on it one of those little little uh, head caps to make your herring squiggle and then i ran a herring with no head cap i've been running a green spinner for a little bit nestor is now running a naked herring right uh, a super bait nestor's got a, a brad super bait is that what it is yeah. yeah nestor's running a brad super bait which i know he caught a big fish on last year and uh we're just cruising the line. It's a uh, shoulder to shoulder, bumper to bumper, full combat boat fishing out here. And uh, I don't know, hopefully we can get into a couple of fish. Yeah, you can see it's pretty packed out here. I don't know if you can see all those boats out there in the distance, but there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. That's 32 boats right there in front of us. Um, and here over to the side of us, here's another 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. 40 boats inside of our boat right now, guys. So sometimes that's what it takes to get yourself into a fish. We could go up river and fish areas that nobody else is really fishing right now but there's a reason that everybody is fishing this stretch of water and generally speaking all the boats are in the same area for a, for a reason a little while ago i was high tide the fish were stacked a little farther up river and all the boats were up there too and now that the tide is getting low and the fish are moving down towards the bay that's where all the boats are also so there's a reason that we're surrounded by other guys fishing so the setup that we're fishing out here, um, there's a couple different ways you can do it, but you basically want to set up some kind of a splitter or a weight slide so you can drop a cannonball off of that. Having the line to your cannonball um, 
connect to a swivel or have a loop in the end or something so you can swap out the size of the cannonball that you're using as your trolling weight is also really, really uh, convenient because you're gonna wanna use a five ounce sometimes and a 15 ounce other times, which is kind of crazy. So you put that little splitter or that weight slide um, uh, connected to the next leader and you've got your ball, your cannonball hanging down. After that, we're gonna run a flasher, you know, connected to a, a three-way swivel or a splitter or something like that. Then we're gonna run a flasher. And then behind the flasher, we're gonna run out to our piece of tackle, either a, a spinner or a troll and a herring or a hoochie or a plug of some kind. Um, but that's the basic setup. You've got your, your bait with your hooks, your flasher or dodger or wiggler or some kind of a thing. Running up a little bit farther, you've got a, a separator, and then you get a, you know maybe a foot drop of line to a cannonball. And what that helps you do while you're slowly dragging, you want to stay pretty close to the bottom. So every now and then your cannonball will touch bottom, and when your cannonball bounces bottom, you'll see the tip of the rod move a little bit, and you'll be like, oh, I'm dragging bottom. But usually you're not actually dragging your spinner or your bait. You're not dragging your hook and your flasher across the bottom. You're you know maybe a foot above it. Is the, is the hope at least. Um, being inside that zone, you know, three feet, four feet off the bottom is generally where you want to be running. Although sometimes the fish will be, um, you know, suspended at 30 feet. You'll be in 50, 60 feet of water and all the fish will be sitting right there at 30 feet. But um, trying to keep it as close to the bottom as you can and then get a nice slow troll on. Um, the boat we're running right now has a 90 horsepower Yamaha on it. And even on its very lowest setting, almost on idle, we're moving a little bit fast to, um, to be trolling for salmon. So what I've done is I've hooked up a five gallon bucket on some strings. I drilled some holes in the bucket, ran them through the, uh, ran rope through the holes in the bucket, wrapped it around the handle, and then I have that pulled up to the two back cleats on the boat. That bucket right there is what keeps us moving the perfect trolling speed for fish. That engine's a little bit heavy for this boat. Get that nice slow troll on. Quick little zip to the next trolling location. We're gonna get lines into the water again and try to get in to a fish. Cause we coasting, coasting on a dream, coasting. Yeah, this one's for you and me. Shout out to Zion Eye. Rest in peace. to me right there swimming along right there on the other side of that hump it's exactly where one would be hanging out too fish on guys yeah Hard to tell right now. Feels a little bit like it could be a coho. We're, we're heading towards shore, huh?
right, guys, I got a nice fish on. Caught it on a spinner I made myself too, a little green, little green and white hoochie spinner. I'm hoping that it's gonna be a nook, but I'd be happy with the coho. It just feels good to have something on the line, to be real. That's a look a good looking fish right there. Whoa, 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 whoa. All right, that's all I got as far as reeling in. I'm in. Oh yeah, there's a run. Look at it. Did you guys see that? Oh my god. Whoa, whoa. He is not done. This fish is not done at all. Woo -hoo -hoo. Uh oh, uh oh. Here we go. Bring it on to the other side. That's enough, huh? Yeah. Right there. Uh oh, uh oh. Oh yeah! Oh yeah, dude. So stoked. <laughs> that's what's up, yeah, dude. Yeah, that's what's up. First fish of the season on the nice big green spinner that I made myself. Shout out to Tobiah for being like, yo, try that green spinner out. Cause it worked for yeah, me today. Oh yeah. oh yeah, I'm stoked on that fish. Yee! Look at that. <laughs> Amazing. Bro, what a big, beautiful salmon. Awesome. Oh yeah, dude. Awesome. Woo! <laughs> I'm gonna find a bonkin stick so we can put this fish down real quick and then um, we'll show it off a little bit. <laughs> Bro, hell oh, yeah, man. Woo! Awesome. On this little green spinner I made right here. It's got the white little squid hoochie bottom, some green shrink wrap, a couple of beads, and a blade, and that got me my fish today. Yee! Yee! <laughs> Look at this big, beautiful Chinook salmon. That's a beautiful king right there. I'm gonna use half of this for a catering gig coming up. I'm gonna uh, give probably a couple of chunks to Nestor. To be real, I probably won't have to because he's gonna have a fish by the end of the day, but I'm gonna give a couple of chunks to friends and family, and I'm gonna use some for a catering gig, and I'm gonna throw some in the freezer. Super, super stoked to uh, get to celebrate in Oregon abundance, and that is a beautiful, big, king salmon right there trolling a green spinner that i made at my house last night hell yeah that's all i gotta say <laughs> hell yeah hell yeah i'm so glad that i switched up to that spinner the um herring that i was trolling were a little bit small and they were kind of wobbling a little bit weird and i liked them but i just kept having trouble with them like first i was like this is money look at how good it is Kept having just a little bit of trouble and I was like, ah, I might as well try this spinner. Let's put it on. And my first run of dropping it through a little area, that was the jam. And I was skeptical of this whole stretch of river. I'm like, ah, we should go back up there. We saw some fish jumping. And uh, Nestor was like, no, this is the zone, man. Let's run through this zone. And then all of a sudden it dropped off into deep water. And bam, I stuck a fish. Super, super stoked on that. Well, you guys, we just finished our day. Called it after a fun, awesome afternoon of zipping around and uh, checking out the estuaries, doing a little fishing, catching that epic big King Chinook salmon that I'm super thrilled about. And I'm um, just hanging out. It's good to hang out with Nestor. We haven't gotten to fish very much over the last you know, year or so. 
and um, I think we're gonna be fishing together more because I'm trying to get back out here and do this again. It was a blast. Yes. Um, I know you had a blast awesome, even man. though uh, we didn't hook one up. Um, you live out here, so you'll get more opportunities to fish too, right? You'll probably be back on the water in the next couple days. Yeah, probably. This is kind of just the start, the first couple times now. Right. So. Sweet. Well, super stoked on uh, getting out here on the water and um, showing me where the deep holes are. Nestor kind of navigating me through some of the areas. He's like, we want to go over there, we want to go over there. It's always nice to have a local homie to be like, yo, you're about to hit a sandbar. So um, that was nice. The teal with it did great. If you guys are out there hating on the channel, you can teal with it. And uh, we're gonna throw this bad boy up onto the trailer and drag it out of here and get on with the rest of our adventure. Behind the column. 